Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wanatoa Joe and this is my Evolve review. Now, as a disclaimer, this is not my gameplay, I currently do not have gameplay on my site, but this gameplay does belong to a very famous YouTuber named Tetra Ninja, and there's a couple things I wanted to go over in this video either way, so I'll use it. Um, go check him out, he's actually a very good uh, streamer and YouTuber. But what I wanted to say was this, um, I wanted to do a... Evolve review that I haven't done, especially with the game coming out basically right around the corner. Um, if you've ever seen my streams, if you ever asked me about it, this is my most anticipated game of 2015. Um, I have played in both the, I mean, all three of the uh, current tests, which were the uh, technical alpha, the big alpha, and the recent beta. And I wanted to go over a couple things. I'm first going to go over the monster playstyle, uh, monster and things like that. And at the end of each one, I'll tell you if they're going to be, basically, is it going to last a while? And is it going to be repetitive um, for each character? Because uh, each character does play very differently, um, depending on what you play as, as well as the mostly diverse, uh, uh, the multitude of characters that they have. But let me go over the monsters first. Now, what I really want to say about the monsters is they are probably out of everyone the most diverse when it comes to playstyle. And what I mean by playstyle is um, me, myself, I am a very sneaky Goliath. I play Goliath. I don't really play the Kraken. I like the Wraith, but I'm not very good with her. Um, and I don't really like her playstyle too much. Um, but in general, I play Goliath. Um, I'm waiting for the Behemoth. The Behemoth is definitely going to be the character I'm looking forward to. Um, but... Right now, the Goliath, I do love him a lot. He is one of my favorite characters in a lot of games. Like, he's just a very, very cool, Le a cool Leo <laughs> designed monster. He's very, very interesting and very, very fun. Um, and the thing about it is, you sit back, and a lot of people, you know, they play Goliath as, uh, I'm just going to go in at level 2 or 3 and just fight. No, for me... I like to play very sneaky. I like to wait until I go in, uh, wait, and I like to hide in bushes, and I like to keep you off track and keep you away from me until I get to stage two, and then maybe I'll try and find an advantageous position or part of the map that I like or something like a monster um, that f you're fighting against that I'm fighting you with, like things like that. Things like that um, make the way you play the monster is very different. So I've played against Turtle Rock devs who are very aggressive, who at level 1 find a very advantageous position and fight us from it, and defeat us, and beat us. Um, and I've met Turtle Rock devs who who have played very kind of like the average game where they'll come and fight maybe at level 1 if we find them, but they play like around the bends and they kind of hide everywhere and they do things like that. Um, and once they're level three, they just go in and they fight really hard, you know, normal play style. I've met people, random people who have, you know, sat there and just try to fight us at level one without armor or anything and just die. Um, so as the monster, there's multiple ways you can play, um, as your play style progresses throughout the game, what you want to do. It, it depends on really what you want to do. Now, does your play style really work for all the characters? No, like you play as the Wraith level one, um, you know, going in at level one and trying to camp the, the spawn point for the hunters, like, you're always going to lose. The Wraith is the weakest early game, but the best late game. And that's the thing, is that because this game supports multiple playstyles, depending on um, both the monster and hunter views, um, it, really, it really doesn't become repeatable. It doesn't really become... Uh, rep uh, Repetition. It, it doesn't have a lot of repetition in it because I played against multiple people and everyone played differently. Nobody played the same. I've had Goliaths who just run in circles around the, the dome and that's all they do. I've met Goliaths who at level 2 will start a fight and then run away and then come back at level 2 and start and then run back and then find level 3 and then come back in like guerrilla style kind of, kind of ways. I've met all kinds of people and yes, the monsters are the same. Through and through, they are the same, but they play completely different based on the person. And it's a lot like if you've ever played um, or seen uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee or Project M, where everybody plays their characters differently. Even though it's the same character, they play them very different differently. Um, 
And that's the cool part about Evolve. Like, as you can see, Tetra right here, he's playing very aggressively. He's just eating. He's eating, and he's trying to get to a level 2 as fast as possible. Um, he's leaving a lot of tracks behind, which means that the, the, the hunters are going to be on his tail almost consistently throughout the entire game, if they're good hunters. Um, and that's the cool part about this, is you can play like this. I've seen monsters who, right when we get off the dropship, legit a minute in, they've already become level 2. It's crazy. There's a lot of things that you can do. Now, does it mean they always win? No, because certain playstyles do really well. Uh, do really well against other playstyles, and certain playstyles do really well against. Uh, uh, do really bad against other playstyles. So, the thing about it is, depending on um, the monster, depending on the hunters, you really have to sit there and decide who you're going to focus. So a lot of people say, just focus the medic. The medic's your number one focus. Now, most of the time, the medic is. But the, a lot of the times, there are people who are defending the medic. And what I mean by that is, let's say like Hank. Hank is very good for defending because what does he do? He has a shield. Now, you might think the shield's not good, but he basically gives that person an extra life and an extra couple seconds to either do damage to you, to heal another teammate, or just to wait for their cooldown so they can heal themselves, like Val, who has a burst heal, just like a lot of other uh, medics do. And that's the cool part about it, is all the characters play differently. Um, and you have to play very differently against them. So, like, they have... Right now, uh, the Hunters are actually doing really well. Um, they're playing very aggressively, even though their Medic should have been up on top of that building healing instead of, like, sitting there and trying to fight. Um, same with the Hunter and the, uh, the, hunter and the uh, uh, support. But he does really well in general. Like, there's not much that you can do. The, he didn't focus the, uh, he didn't focus the uh, Bucket the bucket turrets which did a lot of damage and yes bucket does a lot of damage with those turrets but it's all about placement now because he didn't play he placed them in very awkward positions the monsters didn't focus them or hit him down and he did a lot of damage comparatively to that so you have to realize that when you play certain monsters you have to play it's not about oh my play style is better than everyone else's because i win all the time because i get a lot of people on youtube saying i'm 21 and zero monster stupidly op no um, in a later, in after this, I'll actually show you something that tells you that the monster is not um, very, very strong. The monster actually loses a lot more. Now, I'm not going to say I have, um, I am like the best monster player. I have not lost a monster match, but that is against level, uh, level one people. And that's another thing is, you know, people think the monster is stupidly OP because, hey, the monster is a giant freaking fucking monster. Like this, it's a huge monster that free breathes fire and shoots electricity and just destroys you um but the thing is you know it, you can't sit you have to realize that these people are usually lower levels now in the open beta and big alpha you're going to get a lot more new people than you are uh than in the technical alpha um just because it's a big a bigger better place for people to actually like play the game or more people to play the game so a lot of people don't know what they're doing but when you actually get to a certain level and you actually play against good hunters it's really 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 hard to actually beat them as the monster honestly this game is way more balanced than you would think now does does that mean like that it's going to be repetitive? No, because a lot of people I've I've met have said, "Oh, the games are if if a game's really balanced, it's repetitive." No, it's not, because the multitude of characters you can choose really shifts things up, both in monster and hunters. So, what I want to get down to the point is that as a monster, do I think the game is repetitive, and do I think it will last a long time? Yes, I think that the monsters, repetitive wise, are probably the least worried about i'm uh, the least i'm worried about because the monsters like i said before their play styles uh everybody has a different play style as a monster like he plays very aggressive tetra plays very aggressively he's trying to run away but at the same time you know he thought he could take him at level one instead of i mean a level two with no armor and still try to fight and you shouldn't do that but that's his play style let him do him and if he finds a team that he can do well against he finds a team we could do well well against um the thing is, like, as you can see, he, like, jumped right there into the wall. You shouldn't be doing that as a Goliath. Um, he's trying to get away, but you can't, like, flame breath while you're doing things like that. But that's the thing. Is your playstyle really, your playstyle really uh, judges how you, well you're going to do as the monster. So, as the monster, will I think it's going to be repetitive? No, because you have multiple monsters to choose from, depending on your playstyle, you know. And even with, like, 
Goliath, let's say you're more of a person like Kraken. You can play like Kraken as Goliath with f just Flame Breath and Rock Throw. And if you want to get away and just hide up in, in nooks and crannies, you could still do that as Goliath. You could still do that. You could still be like an aerial bombardment, like Mortar Bomb and stuff like that with Goliath. So yes, as a repetitive, is is the Goliath, is the, what's it called, um... Is, uh, are they going to be repetitive? No. I think they're going to be a lot of diversity, especially with the hunt, the monsters that are coming out very soon, uh, such as the Behemoth, which I'll show you later, and um, multiple other monsters and hunters that are coming out. But now I want to talk about the hunters. Um, the hunters, uh, in my mind, it, are very class... and because Well, the thing is, they are class-based. And because they are very class-based, um, you know, medic only does medic things, support only does support things, things like that, because they are class based, yes, they are gonna get repetitive. I can be honest with that because I play Trapper, I play Support, I play um, all the all of them. My favorite assault is Markov. My favorite uh, medic is Val. Um, and just for you Markov players out there, please use the mines. The mines are stupid good. Please use them. They're stupidly good. But the thing about it is, Yes, are the if you play the same role over and over again, is it repetitive? Yes, of course it's repetitive because you have you don't change your abilities, you don't really change your playstyle because your trapper does trapper things if they play right, and your support does support things like they're supposed to. Your medic does medic things, and your assault does assault things. Um, it's not really a lot a difference, but what makes them not as repetitive, um. Is the ability to change so like I play support I play trapper but when I want to kill something I just go Markov and I destroy like I mean no you know what I mean I I'm not trying to be gloaty or anything like that but I am trying to say that you know I just want to destroy things I want to kill things I play Markov or I play hide um I I have yet to play Parnell I did not unlock him um I have not yet to play the tier three uh uh tier three hunters but um I love the assault class. Uh, I love playing medic and being support. I love all the classes, and each character does different things. And because they do different things, guess what? You're never gonna get bored with it. If you feel like, hey, I should kill something, play assault. If you feel like, hey, I need to be support. If I need to help make sure my team doesn't die, play medic. If you're like, hey, my team needs a way to get there faster, or they need a, a some kind of boost, play support. If you want to, if you're like, fuck this monster, I don't want him to go anywhere, play Trapper. I mean, there's just so many things you can do. Now, it's very less, it, it's not as, it's not as, it's, it's more limited when you're a hunter than you are when you're a monster. But it still offers a lot more than the monster, than the monster because there's more of the hunters to play as. So it really comes down to how well you can actually play the hunters. And, you know, that that's, that comes to another topic that I want to talk about is um, you have to realize, and a lot of people I don't think realize this, is that the medic and the trapper are the hardest characters in the game to get used to. They really are. Um, they are the toughest to learn. They are the toughest to... Um, play as um the medic especially as val has to do a lot of things both trank heal curate reek spots um lazarus is really hard to um things like that like each character because uh each character i'm not and i'm not sitting here saying that each character is useless besides the trapper and medic no if you don't have a soul you're not going to do damage if you don't have a support well guess what you're not getting that boost you might need to finish him off or to get away if you're not playing, if you're not playing Trapper right, well, guess what? That monster is going to get to level three faster than you expected. And if you're not playing Medic right, well, guess what? The, te the entire team fails because of that. Like the entire team dies because of you. Um, but it's just as a play style, the Trapper and Medic are hardest to play. They definitely are, just because if you do not have a Trapper, um, and I'm, like I said before, I'm not trying to say that hey the the trapper and the medic are way better than the support. I mean than the assault and support. It's just that they have more responsibilities, and that's what it really comes down to for the medic, especially the medic. The medic is definitely the hardest class, um, and the trapper's right behind her. Um, the responsibilities of both are just harder uh, than the support and uh, the support and uh, trapper uh, than the uh, support and assault. My bad, uh, but. Uh, they are also the most rewarding. So, like, when you play as a medic or you play as a, a trapper and you trap the monster. Like, let's say I like I play trapper. When I trap the monster, I'm like, yes, we got the son of a bitch. Let's go. And we just destroy him. You know what I mean? 
Um, and when you play as, uh, as a medic and you're like, oh no, that guy needs a heal, you heal him, like, and he just doesn't die, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you're not dying on my watch. Like, it's just, it's, it's very rewarding. They're the hardest to play, but they're also the most rewarding. Um, the only other rewarding, like, thing is the, the support and the, of course, the, they're all the, like, here's the thing. All the classes are rewarding. When you play the, all the classes, they are all very rewarding. The only difference is that <laughs> they're, the most rewarding are definitely the two hardest classes, which are the Trapper and the Medic. And it's just because, you know, you have to do a little bit more than, like, support and, and, uh, than support and, uh, uh, assault. But they're still really fun. So, like, you get this big adrenaline rush when you beat the monster as any class, and it's, it's more, and because of that, it's, like, very strategic when you play as the, as the hunters. You have to actually plan with your team, communicate with your team, and understand what your strengths are and what you're not, um, what your strengths aren't, and, it just comes down to, like, if you can pull it off or not. You know, I've had teams where they played Kraken, and we had the worst characters against the Kraken, and we still won. And it's just because we played as a unit, and you have to play very strategically. You have to play very smart. And if you do that as a, as a Hunter team, trust me, there is nothing more rewarding. I have still yet to lose that adrenaline rush, that, that feeling of, like, oh, we did it, we got him, like, whether or not. The only time I haven't felt it was when, you know, we beat him at, like, level one, and it's because they're, like, low-leveled, and they don't know what to do. Like, other than that, like, it's been a joy, it's always been a ride, especially when you're going against a good monster, and a, a, with a good hunter team, it's just always fun, and, and I think, um, what it comes down to is, do I think the hunter team is going to be repetitive? More repetitive than the monster, yes. Um, just as I said, the monster um, is going to be less repetitive because of playstyle. You can do multiple playstyles with each monster. Um, but the thing is, will you um, will the monster last longer? No, because there's not going to be as many monsters. Um, they will probably not last longer. But the uh, but the hunters, in my opinion, will last longer. So it's a good given give and take with this game it's a really good give and take with this game because you have to realize that not everyone as you saw here tetra um lose just because you know he didn't play very smartly he was wasn't he was trying to fight super early on without armor and because of that one fight he lost like that was legit it he's not a bad player by any means it just it did, his play style did not work up against it and that's the thing you have to realize um, is, it's not just that, it's not just that, oh, you're easily going to beat somebody, or you're easily going to do something like that, it also comes down to stats, now, um, I've had multiple people come in and say, hey, or I've seen comments say, hey, uh, this character's broken, everyone hates, uh, you know, this character, the, the monster's broken, something like that, well, as you can see here, the monster actually loses less, I mean, loses more than the hunters, the hunters actually win more, which is actually kind of surprising, because in the uh, alpha, the big alpha, it was actually worse. It was like 60 to 40% that the monster would win comparatively to the almost 50, 50 that the monster versus hunters have now. Um, it also shows like that, you know, all this, all, all this stuff is iconography. All of this stuff is just info that shows you like who does what and what better. And the thing about it is, and well, what I want to say is my last point is this. I've seen people come in and say, hey, you know, this character's stupid, nobody likes this character, she's terrible. You know, I've had people come in and say, why does Maggie and Griffith do really bad against the Wraith? But it's not true. Um, that's like saying that only Tier 3s, and I've seen this before, that only Tier 3 Hunters can beat the Tier 3 Wraith. Not true, because there are actually two, I can think of two off the top. That do really well against Wraith. Hank, because of his shield, because the Wraith is single target damage, mainly single target damage. And, guess who else? Lazarus, a tier 2. Now, if you want to sit there and say, oh, the Wraith does really well against this character. Like, uh, against only, she, she's only good, uh, you know, like, oh, the monster's so good because she only does well against the tier 3 hunter or some shit like that. You know, or the tier 3, uh, with tier 3 hunters. Like, the tier 3 hunters beat her so bad. No, it's not true. Um, it's just like how he said that Maggie and Griffith are terrible against the Wraith. Not true. You can't sit there and say that because it's not true. Um, 
Because Maggie can actually keep the Wraith locked down. Even when she's invisible, she can still be hooked. Or, I don't know, I don't think so. But, when she comes to fight, if Maggie has everything placed, she can't go anywhere. Um, Griffith, at the same time, if, let's say, Wraith Supernova's on somebody, he can pull her off. And she can't do anything about it, unless she turns around and actually tries to fight Griffith. Um, it's the same with, like, Markov. Because she's um, very melee-oriented, you just leave safe zones where your uh, support and medic should be. And when you leave those safe zones, let's say she goes into Supernova, guess what? Wraith, the Wraith, and a quarter, a per, a quarter of her... Uh, not only all of her armor, but a quarter of her, of her health will be depleted if she takes five mines. Done. And she has nothing. She has to run away. Or else she still has to deal with Markov. It's kind of ridiculous. And a lot of people sit there and they say these characters are bad and it's not true. And yes, it's true that the race does the most damage, as you can see here. The Goliath at stage one does the most damage. The Kraken all around does the most, uh, does a consistent DPS. He does dam good damage. DPS, so he does good damage per stage. Um, the Wraith, on the other hand, is a level 3 monster who needs to get to level 3 to actually do things. And it's true, as you can see here, she is actually the most damaging of all the monsters at stage 3. Even Goliath. And it's true. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and as it says here, you know, 49% to 51 is not bad at all. It was, like I said before, 60 to 40% in the in the Hunter's Favor. And now it's still in the Hunter's Favor, but only by basically 2%. That's pretty crazy to me. Um, and I that means that they balanced the game enough to the point where, hey, everyone's going to have fun. Um, do I think, you know, that the game is... You know, unbalanced, do I think that, like, certain hunters don't do good against certain monsters? Yes, I do. There has been people who said, you know, that, uh, what was, who was it? Um, said Griffith does really well against the, uh, uh, against the Goliath. Now, I have nothing wrong with that statement. I have nothing wrong with that statement because I think Griffith is plays right, can be played very well against the Goliath. But Maggie, in my honest opinion i think does best because she could place she could place tur uh uh not turrets she could place um the harpoons in front of him behind him so uh, on the side of him so that he actually has to turn or uh, hit hit the one forward turn around hit back and by that time you're taking at least a quarter of your health out um it's just personal opinions mostly but i mean you have to realize that these monsters and these hunters are not always going to be played the same. It's just like right here, the the behemoth. This big bastard, who is I'm probably going to play the fuck out of, um, is legit. As they said, they've already said it. Um, there's even gameplay. Go look it up of this character. They legit said that this character is at stage three unkillable. There is nothing you can do unless you fuck up as the monster. Um, unless you fuck up as the monster, there's no way to kill it, from what I've heard. But, because it's big and slow, it's going to get targeted more. It's going to be harder for it to evolve. If it is harder for it to evolve, guess what? It's not going to get to stage 3, and it'll be killable. So, it's it's all trade-offs. Like, you have to understand that this game is balanced as hell. Um, it is, it is Like I said before, there are good gives, and there are good takes. There is also bad gives and bad takes. Um... Like I said, there's only going to be, I think they even said, there's going to be five monsters. As of right now, there's going to be five monsters, the fourth being the Behemoth, and the fifth we have not seen yet, and these four hunters that are actually supposed to be coming out. I don't know if it's with the Behemoth, but when these four, four hunters come out, there's actually supposed to be another two hunters that actually come out. They're waiting to see if people will actually love the game, if they'll actually stay here and see if it survives or not, and... You have to realize that, yes, this game did not get a lot of marketing. Yes, this game did not... It, it marketed very poorly. Even my friends who I've been hyped about and told about have said, Oh, we, we're not going to get it. It looks stupid. It's not my kind of game. Guess what? When the beta came out and we played on Xbox One, now they're actually going to get it. Maybe later than the pre-order, but they're going to get it. And I'm willing, to, I'm willing to buy it for both my PC and my Xbox just because I'd rather play with them at when I'm on my Xbox, and I'd rather be able to stream it. And you have to 
realize that they want to put out more DLC for the community. Because what a lot of people don't realize is everyone goes, oh, that's overhyped. It's overhyped from Evolve. You know, this game is super overhyped. But you have to realize that a lot of the hype come from the people who actually played it, such as myself. A lot of the hype come from people who are new to the game and enjoy the game more than most people. And that's what you have to realize is that, yes, they did have bad marketing. You have, but the thing is, people like me who actually enjoy the game, who actually love the game, who actually want to see it progress. I want to see more monsters. I want to see more hunters. You know, I want to see more things like that come out into this game. If you don't want to see that, like, that's fine. Nobody likes the same things. Cool. But, you know, there are people who sit there and talk shit and stuff like that. And they say, oh, this game's not going to survive. I don't know why you like it so much. I hate it. And it's like, cool. That's your opinion. That's up to you. That's good for you. Whatever you like, go ahead. Because guess what? I'm pre-ordering the game. I'm loving this game. And uh, I think that's basically it. Like, that's all I have to say. I kind of had to get a lot of things, like, off. You know? I had to kind of say what I wanted to say about this. Because, you know, there's been a lot of people, you know, bad-mouthing it and not really, like, real, really realizing what this game could be. Um comparatively to the most other uh, first-person shooters. And it's just, it's different from most of them. And I, I highly recommend you, if you are watching this, to at least try it. To at least, if your friend gets it, or if something like that, just go, hey, can I come over and try it out? Like, just play it once, and you'll see, like, how fun it can be. Now, I'm not saying, like, you'll always enjoy it. I'm not saying everyone will enjoy it. Everyone has their different tastes, like I said before, but just try it. That's really all I have to say, guys. My name is Wanatoa, and I'm basically out of here. Thanks for stopping in and coming in and watching my Evolve review. So, I'll see you later in more videos. Peace.